Hey there, everybody. It's Lisa Dury with Control Alt Delete. And I just did a quick sync. Like when you have meetings at work, right? And you do the syncs beforehand. This is a really good influence tip, by the way. Meet with the people you want to be on your side before the meeting. Don't wait till the meeting. But of course, I met with Megan Corey before we went live so we could align and make the best use out of your time. And I'm more excited now than I was even when we first talked about this because there are a couple of things that she's going to bring up today. I think I can learn too. Like there is really some wisdom. She's just dropping it today. I'm so excited for you. So I'm going to jump right in and leave you with this thought. If you're feeling tired, if you've gained weight while we're going through this crazy world that we're in right now, if you are drinking more coffee than you wanted, if you find yourself more angry, if you are having sleepless nights, if you're not moving as much as you should and you don't even know how to make that happen, if you're just feeling overwhelmed and stuck and know there's a better way and you know that you got to do things differently, then you're in the right place. Because Megan Corey is, oh my gosh, she's so awesome. So let me just, I'm going to read it to you. She's a habit and lifestyle expert facilitator, speaker, and she's a yoga instructor. So heads up, she's also been in your shoes. She's actually been in the working world and watched what's been going on and she's on a mission. So I'll let her tell her story, but who's who she helps. And I know you're gonna see yourself here. She helps busy professionals, leaders and organizations transform their overall well-being. I'm gonna pause there because don't we all need some transformation right now? Transform their overall well-being, lifestyle and culture to fuel productivity, performance, increase engagement and connection, leading to personal, professional and organizational success. I mean, that's like mic drop, like, okay, I got nothing else to say. Megan, I'm so excited you're here. I know we all need this and thank you for making the time. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm really glad. I, let's just jump right in. Okay. Um, can you share a personal story, personal experience about why you are doing what you do. Like, tell us what got you here and why this Absolutely. is so important right now. Absolutely. Um, so back in my previous life, when I was in the corporate world, when I was burnout, stressed out, I was literally, you know, working probably 20 hours a day, it felt like, and commuting. And the only thing that was keeping me up was caffeine and sodas. And I was I think it was when I was driving in my car at 4.30 a.m. and I was literally doing air punches with the window open and the music blaring just so I could stay awake to try to beat traffic to get to the gym before my long day. I was like, I can't continue to live like this. This is not a life to lead. So in terms of switching positions in my world and then as well as starting to really internalize, what does it look like to be feel better, look, you know, it's, it's more of like people say healthy and wellness, and that could be so many things, but how do I just feel better? How do I have more energy? And it really came to me when I was kind of coaching through um, some folks when I was at, at another previous job and I was sitting in meetings and just watching people drinking the Mountain Dews all day, or just, you know, it's, it's 4 PM and they're having their fifth cup of coffee and they have a Twinkie next to them or just some pretzels. Cause they're like, I didn't have time for lunch or I couldn't do anything else and just absolutely burn out. And I was like, I, I don't see myself doing this. I cannot continue like this, but I also want to be able to help others. So that's how I became a wellness coach and really focused on habits and lifestyle changes is how do we, as busy executives, as entrepreneurs, as CEOs, whatever it may be, how do you continue to be your best and thrive in this, in your organizations as a leader, but also at the same time, not forget how you feel, keeping that energy level up and really focusing on your health. Because honestly, if we don't have our health, we can't be the best at everything else we do. Mm. Oh my gosh. I, you honestly took me right back to my, my aha moment on my own journey, which this is, there's many, right. But one of them was I actually ended up taking a medical leave. Um, I was 100 pounds overweight. I was extremely stressed out. My mom was terminally ill. I was not performing. I could. I tell stories of this all the time. I couldn't even find my car after I parked it, right? Because I was so busy getting to work um, right. and then trying to leave to pick up my young daughter. And what I realized when I took the time off, right, and really invested in myself to feel better. Mm -hmm. I so many times thought I was hungry and I didn't even know how to discern tired from hungry. And I realize now, and I'm sure you have more to say about this too, but I have to, I now have to ask myself, wait a minute, am I hungry or am I tired? And 
I mean, sometimes that was even thirsty. So for anyone listening, um, maybe you already know this and it was just this big wake up call for me, but really getting clear over the messages your body's sending you and analyzing how much sleep you are or aren't getting. Um, Cause I really had the badge of honor of productivity at all costs. And yeah. people around me were telling me they're worried about me. And I was like, I got this. I have capacity. I'm great. Right. right? And right. They all sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. If you're a hundred pounds overweight, you're not okay. Right. right. I didn't know I was a hundred yeah. pounds overweight. I avoided the scale. Right. But right. Uh, yeah. So is, am, am I the only one that didn't know you might be, you might be tired when you're overeating, you know, like what's this, what's the insight there science-based or whatever, like how can we help people not get where I got? Right. Absolutely. And, and people don't think sleep is connected with it, right? It's the whole, I'll sleep when I'm dead mentality. I have so much energy. I'm just not the type of person that sleeps and that's, I can run on four hours of whatever. It doesn't matter. But at the same time, there are studies that link to higher cortisol levels and what cortisol levels are um, when you do have that lack of sleep is that's the, the fat, right? So that's where we're holding on to fat. And in turn, it's also ra raising our, our hunger cravings. So when we, that lack of sleep, there is a direct correlation. So the reason why you always felt like you were hungry might be, Hey, this is my body and my hormones and all these cortisol levels. Everything's kind of just staying there. It's not going to start burning anything because mm -hmm. it's really thinking we're in this fight or flight. We're like, what's going on? My body is not ready for this. I need to sleep and we're going to continue to work. So you're exactly right. Once we get that, you know, more sleep and, and it's the quality sleep, it's not just sleep and people are like eight hours you need eight hours it's really the quality if, if six or seven hours is that quality sleep mm -hmm. it's the quality sleep no distractions and just having that number one will start decreasing those cravings but again the cravings are also like you might be dehydrated so just having water with you at all times because if we're like i'm starving i'm starving but if, if you think about when was the last time i drank water and we can't remember mm -hmm. definitely drink that water first and that's always a cue that i recommend for anybody is is work on the sleep, try to see how do we get that and, and kind of shutting things down, even though it's very hard for us all to do, mm -hmm. but that blue light will mess up that REM sleep and just taking say 30 minutes prior to shutting everything down, letting yourself try to find that sleep. And I get it, we all wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, as hard as you can, try not to look at your phone, get on the computer, watch TV. It's yeah. gonna ignite you staying up again. And again, that REM sleep is super important. So between the sleep and the water, those are huge things to really work on for cravings. Man, I just realized I never thought about this part, but you know, I had a global job, right? So I would wake right. up to go to the restroom and absolutely I would check my phone and yes. I'd be chatting it up with Europe. You know, I'd stay <laughs> up late for India. And I just thought, wow, I'm just so, um, I'm such a good collaborator, right? I'm so willing to right. be on their time zones because I'm up anyway. Uh, my boundaries were blown, you know, like I, I, I was prioritizing. It's so funny now because I'm on a I'm on a mission to change this, but my tagline for my business, right, igniting leaders in tech to get kick-ass results at work, build high-performing teams, and be present for the moments that matter. And one of the things that I think when I coach and you know run the programs that I run, when I have people identify the moments that matter, it's always about like their family or loved ones in general, right, or work, of course. Yes. But they never identify moments that matter to themselves. And it's mind blowing to me and yet so um, understandable because when I was in that space, I wasn't prioritizing my own sleep, right? I was prioritizing right. productivity at all costs. And that's not really productive. I look back at all the typos, you know, and, 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 what, and what message am I sending to my team that they should be doing this? Like leadership mm -hmm. requires boundaries and clarity and also quiet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I you. think I th you're absolutely right. And I think there's a big shift uh, currently. And I think a lot of people are seeing during this pandemic is, wait a minute, our, the well-being of our employees needs to come first. How do I, as the leader, mm -hmm. show that, because there's tons of times where you see, you know, like, okay, you guys, yeah, you can take off or do this. But if they continue to see the leader, their supervisor, their executive continue to do that 110%, they yep. feel bad taking off to go use the, you know, taking a break or take using their leave. Meanwhile, if you have somebody showing like, hey, this is okay to do, and this is important, it's it's going to show through the whole organization. Yeah, it's, it absolutely ripples through the culture, right? Yeah, one of the, um, yes. a couple of weeks ago, I had on an amazing woman. I'm so blessed to have this network of awesome people. She's an HR um, consultant yeah. and she just dropped the mic. And I, I'll say it here because it, it's right exactly what you're saying which is if you have someone who is constantly hitting it out of the park right now and over exceeding and you would expect they might slow down or need something, that's your biggest worry, 
right? Because yes. they are on the path. And yes, yes, performance is declining. People are having some needs for flexibility. The people that are asking for you are actually probably more healthy, right? Yeah, the ones right. that aren't, because that was me. I never asked, right? I was like, oh my gosh, right. I got to remember that. So tell me more. Um, one of the things you said to me earlier was there were four habits. And I was yeah. thinking about this as far as, okay, so we're all busy. Maybe the old Lisa who didn't see it all writing on the wall. Um, and then Megan could like whisper in her ear, four simple things, four habits that she could be more mindful of right now. Absolutely. That might've slowed me down or helped me even turn that corner. Uh, tell me more about these four habits. Cause I think everybody could, they're going to find nuggets here for sure. Absolutely. So mindful eating and really t- targeting your hunger cues. So mm-hmm. are we really hungry? Are we doing it out of habit? which is, you know, the, is it the time of day? Is it because this makes me feel comfortable? Is it, well, I always turn to this. Think, really thinking through, and that we talked about it earlier, is if you, you know, the sleeping and you drink water first, am I really hungry? Did I just eat? What was I eating? Am I filling myself up with, you know, am I doing the pretzels or am I doing something more like broccoli? They're just completely different nutrient dense type foods. What am I, what am I putting in my body and start there? So it's really being more mindful of those hunger cues and mindful eating mm-hmm. movement. And it's movement. People think, well, I don't have time to go to the gym. Okay. The gyms aren't open or even during the day. Like I just, it just doesn't work for my schedule. It's just, that's why I say movement. I don't even say exercise. It doesn't have to be exercise. Mm -hmm. You can do, you can have a standing desk. I have a standing desk. You can do anything where if you have weights nearby, I've done that where you can, you can be on conference calls and have weights. If you're on a conference call and you don't need to be at your computer, take a walk around, walk outside, just move thinking like, how do I get movement in during my day when I'm normally so busy? I have executives doing planks out there during conference calls in their offices. You can do squats. It's like, how do I picture that in my mind? Do I park further away? Do I take the stairs? All those Mm -hmm. little things add up. It doesn't have to look like I'm going to the gym on the treadmill and just, you know, really pounding the pavement for 30 minutes. It's Mm -hmm. during the day. What does that look like? And think through that. Sleep was another one. So we already went through that. So I don't need to kind of go through that again, but sleep is a huge habit in in anything. And it's really going to affect every other area of your life. And the last thing is your mindset shifts. So mindset Mm -hmm. shifts around everything we think is what we have to do or not. So we can tell ourselves, somebody could tell you exactly what to eat, exactly how to move, exactly how to do everything in your life. But if your mind isn't correct, or your mind's not in that way of thinking, how do I make this a priority? How do I shift this into Mm -hmm. more positive or the, how can I, instead of, oh, I have to, Mm -hmm. we we will never do it. So honestly, until we start thinking that way of like, ah, how can I make this a part of my life? Where can I make this work? It will always be the, I never have time for it. My schedule's too busy. So thinking through that and every time you catch yourself, it's mm-hmm. that awareness of it. So it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty amazing once we take a step back and become more aware of those things we tell ourselves every day. I just realized I did one of these things and didn't know it. One, one thing I did. So when I went back to work after the leave, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share this because I think it might help the people listening, right? So I wanted to come back from the medical leave and I was very nervous about being judged or being seen as weak. Um, And I decided to just lean all into what I learned and and show up, right? So I said, you know, how might I? That's what I started every day. How might I be present? How might I um, drink more water? How might I get more movement? And that actually unlocked my creativity. And because I was in charge of my division, I had the, I had the, complete control over my day, right? I went from victim to, I just have to get it all done to how might I be more productive and work less or how might I, the thing I, well, the one for sure was movement and yes. I did get a stand up desk and that made a huge difference. And then I started yeah. doing walking one-on-ones. Yeah, isn't it my, amazing? It's amazing. And it was a, yeah. how might I, and then everyone's like, I want to support you. So they weren't even doing it for themselves at first. They were just so happy to see me kind of reborn And then they were like, this is so good. So the culture change within my, you know, my span of control happened. And one of the things that I'm even thinking about now is our kids in school on Zoom and they're not being taught this, right? It's like, be on camera, face forward, da, 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 right? And so my daughter just got a, my daughter's nine. She got a yoga ball and she is bouncing all the time now in (laughs) class. And I was worried the teacher might be mad, right? And the teacher said, I'm so glad to see her getting some movement right? Yes. And so I talk to your teachers, ask what is okay, ask if the camera needs to be on all the time. I mean, we have, you know, a Bluetooth 
a speaker system in the house. Why couldn't we broadcast? If she's listening in music class, why couldn't she be listening and playing with Walking the dog? Yes. Right? Oh, and absolutely. So, yeah, if, if you're not doing it for yourself, but you've got kids at home, maybe you get creative about them first and that can unleash it for you too. Cause it's, you know, like another lens, if you will. They watch it. They absolutely watch it. They know I have five and seven year old and we're in the same boat and bouncing around the yoga ball, getting up. I said, no, your screen's done. Go outside, get on the playground for five. I mean, just anywhere. Yes. And we think, well, we tell our kids to do this. We need to tell ourselves to do this, right? Oh my gosh, they, totally. They, they shadow, they listen, they watch, they know, okay, mommy's working out. They know that I'm going to do that before I start my day, before I start working. How, mommy, are you going to, like, we always find ways and they're watching that. How do we exercise? How do we do that? They're seeing that, they're watching it and it's just what, having them follow through. And mm -hmm. it's just not the kids as well. Think of that as your employees, as people surrounding you, your team, you can get them. Once one person does it, like mm -hmm. you said, if you are that leader, they're going to start following. And I've seen that in so many positive ways of, I got at my previous job, I had gotten a stand-up desk and everybody's like, how do you stand all day? All of a sudden, literally every single person had a stand-up desk. I mean, yeah. it's just pushing people, showing, being that version of like, this is who I want to be and allowing others to follow in that positive way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Absolutely. I, you know, it's, it's, I love this so much because the tie you just made. So whether or not you have kids, this all applies. Right. And I love yes. that you pulled it back to, yeah, for me, my, my example was I'm seeing it and it's opening my eyes, but oh my gosh, if there's someone on your team, you're worried about, why wouldn't you yeah. go model it and inspire them? Not just because so many times I'm worried about you. Thanks. Right. You know, I mean, I'm busy. I got it. Go away. But if someone's like, Hey, I'm taking a walk. Would you go with me? Or, Hey, I'm yeah. getting some water. Can I get you some too? simple things. I mean, one of the people that worked for me, I am so indebted. It would be lunchtime and I'd always skip lunch, always yeah. skipping lunch. And she literally just wouldn't even ask me. And she'd show back up and there'd be a salad sitting on my desk. I made this for you. Oh, I'm like, sweet. that is really sweet. And, but I got a really embarrassed, right? Oh, <laughs> they can see I'm falling apart. You know? And instead of right. just like receiving that love, because listen, we need love at work. I'm not talking HR filing complaints. Right. I'm talking about care and compassion, <laughs> yes. empathy, right? Yes. Modeling. So this woman was giving me love and I wasn't receiving it in the way it was intended. It just triggered me. And then I went into more spiral, um, but don't, don't think I didn't eat the whole salad and feel better, but I yes. didn't spend the time to think, wow, I feel so much more um, clear. Nope. Yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, Megan, back in the day, I didn't want to drink water because I didn't want to have to walk to the bathroom. Right. I mean, the oh. meetings were back to back. I get it. And I I'm like, it. I don't have time to go to the bathroom. Like, this is crazy. If you don't have time to go to the bathroom, you might be having a problem, right? Like, yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And even going to the bathroom, yeah. walking to the bathroom, taking a longer way. I mean, that's what I tell I, people. I'm like, I'm like, just drink your water. And it's a, it's a blessing to go to the bathroom. It is. Right? Not only is your body going to thank you, your energy levels are going to thank you, but then that's the extra steps you're getting during the day too. So just that movement of like having that yeah. forced break almost where we, sometimes we need a forced break because we're, yeah. we could keep our head in our computer all day long. Little thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I had a question for you about Okay, so we're talking about at the individual level, but what are you seeing at the at the macro level? So, you know, the people listening in, sometimes they're the CEO, maybe they're um, investors, mm -hmm. uh, maybe they can really impact culture. What do you know to be true when you think about just the overall impact of wellness in business? I mean, so if we, there's tons of studies done. So a recent one is really like, if even if you look at the health of employees, so um, there's been research shown that even the BMI of, of somebody who's a healthy employee or a healthy person compared to an obese employee, it's more than half, uh, you know, you're going to pay more than half in, in healthcare costs per year. So even just the savings alone of mm -hmm. looking at that could be one thing that, that employers could, could look at. Um, but I also think looking in the eyes of how do I make this work? How do I focus on the well-being of my employees physically, mentally, and emotionally, right? Because it's not just the physical. The mental piece is a huge part of this as well. And mm. especially during these times where a lot of people might be virtual and they might be feeling, you know, sheltered or they don't have that connection where they could normally just do a water cooler talk or they could go out for happy hours. 
it's changed. So how do we make that work? And almost looking at how do we now incorporate what might have been in a workplace setting um, or as a CEO, like what are those things that, you know, we want the performance of our employees to go up. We want to improve the success of our organization. How do we include the well-being as a part of that and making mm -hmm. it this full almost balance that employees can see like this is what we have put together for you um i've seen them you know people put together a task force on well-being of how do we make this work what do we need to focus on now mm -hmm. and get the feedback from the employees make it a collective so if we if, if it's a top down saying hey i think this will work what do the employees think and i really think getting their buy-in on that and having them help create it could yeah. really be beneficial to saying hey you know what me just having 30 minutes of you know, time each day to exercise would be amazing. Maybe um, ideas from, you know, some a cooking class or something once a month to get maybe something like kind of team building exercise, mm -hmm. you know, thinking through like, what are those things that we could do adding yoga or breathing exercise, things that could really take on a whole new level for an organization. But again, if you have those, those input, there might be ideas that people already have, or they're using that are being su that successful for them yep, yep. that could be used across. Yeah, I really appreciate what you're saying there. And I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to bring in some influence skills again. So for all of you that are listening that don't own that decision and you have a great idea, in order to be successful in pitching it, it can't be about you. And I want you to really hear this. It's not, I'm burning out, I need a break. That's never going to work in corporate, right? What can work is, hey, I read some statistics and I've noticed, you know, the overall healthcare costs are going up. And one way to combat that is like what Megan's talking about, whether it's mental health, physical, um, even psychological uh, safety, yes. right? Yes. So many people make it about them. And that's just a huge mistake when it comes to influencing a corporate decision maker to open the purse strings, whether it's yes. about time, um, even meeting uh, um, the amount of meetings. So what you want to do is think about what's in it for you. Of course, you're going to have a personal driver, but how will this benefit the business? And then you're going to have a much easier chance to get someone to say yes, right? Especially if you align that benefit to something they care about, yes. right? So let's say your team, which I saw a lot, there are multiple medical leaves going on. Well, you could have a real candid conversation about, you know, we are really um, noticing that three people have been out. And so all that works flowing downhill. I'd love to talk to you about ways I think we can remain productive and not have any more of these. That's way different than I don't want all the work. Do you know? Yes. yes. So I, I really want to drop that a kind of nugget there for people because, well, listen, even in my Facebook group and on LinkedIn, I just put things like, hey, what would make life better right now? And so many people are like a wireless headset. Um, I'd like an ergonomic chair or a stand-up desk. I mean, some people were, I want a half an hour every day that there are no meetings. And then yes. I went back and I'd say, what's stopping you from asking? Well, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a burden. Hello, you are not a burden. You are there trying to be your best. Yes. You know, and so just to tap into your like co-creation, uh, find the courage, be strategic about it. Talk, you know, this isn't like, the union organizing going on strike. This is, I want to help us. I believe in what we do. I love what I do. And this could help the business. Yes. And we right? can be better because of this. We can yes. be better with this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's my soapbox for, you know, if you're going to go for <laughs> it, like with co-creation, um, what's something that people don't know about you, Megan, what would be interesting for us to, what's a fun fact? A fun fact is, so even though I'm a health and wellness coach and work through habits and lifestyle, I agree that you need to have a good balance and you need to have fun, but as well as like try to, you know, the majority of the time you, you do the healthier things, but have fun and enjoy it or you're never going to enjoy your life. So when I golf, maybe I'll have a cigar and a bourbon, or, you know, I might just have a glass of wine. It's okay. Um, but I do enjoy that balance of of enjoying life because you have to and finding ways to include that into your lifestyle. So you're not only having fun, no matter how hard you're working or else there's no point in having all that work without the fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so interesting. You know, fun <laughs> fact, I've never smoked a cigar. I've never done that. You might have to. I mean, you, you know, when I think about fun. all the sales conferences I've been to or led sessions at, I mean, we always had golf and cigars and honestly right. bourbon. So like you could probably fit right in with all the sales peeps, right? You could yeah. do like wellness and habit on the golf course and like still have oh, yes. fun, right? 
Oh, yes. Bourbon tasting and yoga. Like I love, uh, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, when I think about that, that's such a good lesson for us right now to think yeah. it's not about extremes, right? You know, so many people exactly. go on the extreme diet, the grapefruit diet, the yes. photo holiday photos or what, listen, I've done every, I have done, you name it, I've done it. Um, and I do know that balance and moderation is everything. And yeah. I'm going to ask you this question because I think this sure. uh, could help people too. So when I'm in extreme mode, I, I definitely am aware that I'm not trusting myself, right? It's really about yes. trust and almost yes. I'll even, I'm going to go one step further. I'm yes. going to talk about self-love for a second, right? And prioritizing oneself. Like we go back to moments that matter, right? Yes. So my daughter has a birthday and here comes the most amazing cake. And I'm thinking, I can't have just one piece. I know myself. It's such a good cake. I'm going to want seven pieces. So I can either take a piece and throw it out take a piece and freeze it or not take a piece. And I've done all of those, right? So right. what's the, what's, what would you tell, if I'm your client, what, what guidance would you give me to not miss out on the moment and be truly in a place of celebration with my daughter who at nine wants me to share in the cake, yeah. but you know, here I am going, I'm afraid I'm going to unlock that. And then that sugar cravings never going away. So what's, it's what's it. some insight or advice you have for that? Absolutely. So again, well, yeah. So when we go into those fad diet modes or we, we go to the extreme of, we have to do it this way. Those never work, right? It, we do the 30 day things and then we're right back at it. Or we're even in a whole a storm of, of more than before and we can't control it. So again, this definitely goes back to the mindset. So it's, it's allowing ourselves and not depriving ourselves and what fits in my lifestyle. So yes, if we think, Hey, okay, I'm going to eat this every day because this is, this is, you know, I love cake. Okay, let's switch our mindset to, you know what? I want to enjoy it. I want to savor it. This is a special occasion. I don't eat cake every day. I am going to enjoy this and I'm gonna have my portion and I'm gonna savor it. I'm gonna eat slow and I'm gonna say, okay, that I'm good. I felt like I was, I was good to eat it. And if we have those cravings where we feel as though we need more or we want more, again, that could go back to maybe we are just hungry. And so what I do say to a lot of folks as well, and I do, this is a tip if you're going out to a restaurant and you always feel like you overeat or you order the wrong thing, or you are going to a birthday party or a celebration where again, you're like, man, I want, I don't want to get out of control. You can eat ahead of time. So eat some, you know, eat a salad or some soup or, you know, have some vegetables and something mm. that starts filling you up, drink a lot of water. And then when you get to that celebration, wherever you're at, just think and take a look around and actually become more aware and present in the moment. Not the habit of, well, let me pile my plate just because that's what I normally do. What do I actually want? What am I going to enjoy? And just take a few of each of those things. So it's even the portion sizes as well. Take your time, step back, actually enjoy it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we're like, I have to eat this so fast or I have to drink this so fast to move on to the next thing. Drink water and just enjoy it and see what happens. So it's really being in the present the mindful eating. So we're taking the time and enjoying each bite instead of thinking I have to eat this all so I can get the next thing. Then wait about 20 minutes. Am I still hungry? Do I want some more? What else do I think I need right now? Is it because I see something? Is it in my environment? Is it out of habit? And again, that can be done for anything for in the situation of the cake, in the situation of anything. What do I need right now? And it's taking that step back. So it's still, I never tell anybody not to eat anything. That That is the complete opposite way of what I want to go. How do I incorporate this in my lifestyle and enjoy this? I don't eat this cake every day. I am going to enjoy this and celebrate. Yeah. I'm, I'm rumor, I don't even know what the right word is. What's showing up for me when you're talking, and I think this is, I don't know if this is an aha for anyone listening, it, but I'm, you know, the beautiful thing is it's my podcast. So I just share what I think, right? Yes. Okay. So mindful eating, mindfulness, being present, being present in the moments that matter. Like there's a pull through here. Yes. And the thing that, um, when you were talking about the food and how busy everybody is, what the thing that really, I'm just real time extroverting a thought you guys. So bear sure. with me. So one thing that what I know when I worked from being burnt out to lit up, you know, from overwhelmed and getting to energized and balanced, which I, I really think balance is bullshit. And, and the big picture, the, the concept of like equal everywhere, I think you're in the flow and you have to prioritize. But you know, yes. on the way back to middle, I'll just say that, I really started working on how I wanted to feel. And I didn't think about it. I thought about it. So here's my moment of aha. For so long, how do you want to feel? I have core desired feelings. I want to feel connected. I want to feel energized. 
Um, I want to feel free to be me. Like these have all been core desired feelings, mm -hmm. right? But I never until right now had the thought around how do I want to feel when I'm eating? And I think you just unlocked something for me. And I'm hoping this for someone else listening, this is for you too, that how do I want to feel when I'm eating? Because you were like rushed. I'm like, oh, I want to feel peaceful. I, I'm thinking loud, loud. I want to feel peaceful and connected yes. to my body and the people I'm eating with. I want to feel um, nourished. I want to feel um, the word responsible isn't the right word for me, but I, I'm loving. I'm going to say loving right? Is this choice I'm making loving for my body? I, I honest to God, and you know, I love sometimes that. it's so obvious you don't even know it, but that's just what happened for me just in the way you were describing it. So tell me about some of your core desires. Like when you're making choices about food, how do you want to feel? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do think this through, right? And I have, you know, every, you're never going to have the environment set up the way you want it to, unless you completely live alone and you're able to really set that up and you're very disciplined about it. So let's be realistic. You have cookies in the house, you have chips in the house, you have things that you normally will just go and grab and eat out of habit because they're there. And it's honestly, our willpower can only do so much for us, right? So it's setting up your environment to say, all right, what do I really want and how do I show up and how do I do this? So a lot of times throughout the day is, I mean, I get cravings too. I used to be addicted to sugar and sometimes I feel like I still am. It's, mm -hmm. it's something that you, it's not easy to overcome. These things are habits that we grew up with. We used to eat ice cream and, and desserts every single night after dinner. And that's what I went back to. Well, I'm a dessert eater. Okay. How do I change mm -hmm. that? Or mm -hmm. how do I adapt to that? So it's each time I think him through, what am I hungry for? I really try to follow the cues and am I hungry? When is last time I drink water? Let me drink some more water first. Let me pause a minute. All right, I could be in a rush. What is What can work for me right now? Or prepping mm -hmm. and planning and having things prepared. So already having those things around, knowing what your day is gonna look like. Oh, okay, I, I need something quick to grab. Oh, I already have these carrots, these small baby carrots ready to go. I have this dip that I enjoy. Okay, I don't have time to make lunch right now, but I can, you know, eat these nuts and uh, until you're able, things that are, set yourself up so that you know, no matter what the situation is, no matter how hungry you are, mm -hmm. that you have these items to kind of work through first. And so sometimes I'll say, all right, if after I eat these vegetables or after I eat the salad, if I'm still hungry, then I'll eat this next. So I really do try to take those those levels and stages while with my own thinking. But at the same time, if I'm hungry for something that's there and I say, you know what, I, this is what I want right now and my body needs, that's what I'm going to eat. But then mm -hmm. again, I savor it, I enjoy it. And I don't normally do that every day. If it's a very elaborate, you know, yeah. very unhealthy type meal or whatever it be, I just, it's all about that balance of, yes, I'm out and enjoying a, a meal, I'm gonna enjoy this. And then, you know what, I'm not gonna eat that every day. So really thinking through those, those times as well. Yeah, I'm thinking if I were to describe what you said in the language of core desired feelings, like how you want to feel, mm -hmm. I heard prepared, yes. I heard intentional, Yes. I heard um, almost like a sense of trusting yourself, like really in tune, like maybe connected, I'm going to use that word, right? What, am I hearing, am I pulling the right oh. feelings out of that? Absolutely. Because as soon as yeah. we're disconnected, as with anything, as soon as you're disconnected, everything now is a habit of what you're doing. We pull out our phones out of habit just because it's like, oh, I have a minute of downtime, pull the phone mm -hmm. out. If I, you know, it's a habit because I did this, I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat that because it's right there and it's out of habit. Or you walk by the candy yep. jar at work, it's out of habit. Are you actually thinking about it or is it just doing? Mm -hmm. And it's more just being in that present moment and understanding what's yeah. going on. Yeah, I love this so much. I really appreciate you yeah. sharing it. Absolutely. So you were telling me there's a breath that people could do. So it, here's the thing. We're all breathing and yes. I don't care if you're in the bathroom, driving at work, on a plane, in a car, cooking, like we can all breathe. And yes. one of the things when we talk about being present, what I know to be true is breathing, paying attention to my breathing gets me right back into my body and more center. Yes. Yes. What, what was, what's the tip on breathing for us? Let's all just yes. really lean into this. Cause I think we can all, can't we Absolutely. all benefit from breathing? <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. it doesn't have to be think crazy, right? We think meditation, we think, oh, it has to be this elaborate thing is no, this can be done in the bathroom. This can be done before you send that angry email. This can be done anytime where, where we're in that stress mode, or we just are like, I'm overwhelmed. I'm anxious. What do I need to do to, to settle myself? 60 seconds. You can do this in 60 seconds. If you have longer, feel free to do it longer. And it's really just being present. You can, if you're able to, you can close your eyes. If not completely fine. And it's just taking a deep breath in and allowing your belly to expand. So you can actually put your hand on your belly. And as you breathe in and count to four or five, whatever works, you breathe in 
and you hold for a moment. And as you exhale out, pull your belly towards your navel and count to five on the way out, nice and slow. And then just breathe in, expanding the belly as you breathe in, really digging into that area. And you hold for a moment. And as you exhale, allow your shoulders to pull away from your ears. And even just those few breaths, you're just breathing in. And a lot of times when we're in those fight or flight or in those stressful moments, our breath tends to get shorter. And as we're shortening, it actually does continue to increase that stress response. So mm -hmm. as soon as you do that deep breathing and breathing in and out, you can do that anywhere you are. And just even 60 seconds can completely change the state that you're in and allow you to really just take a step back, pause and reflect. So I call it the pause, just the pause and stop. And it's really a pausing from whatever you were gonna do that you might be in that state of just completely overwhelmed or whatever it may be, pausing, taking that minute of breathing. And now what is that? What is that way? How do I want to show up? How do I want to react? Mm -hmm. I mean, before a big meeting, a big presentation, how you're going to respond to some anger, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's something you can keep in your back pocket and just 60 seconds is all it takes. I feel better doing it with you right now. Honest to goodness, my shoulders drop. It's amazing. Right. And I, and I had heard a quote the other day. I think you were in the session that I was in when, um, because um, Megan and I, Megan and I are in a, a group together where we're facilitating unlocking heads and hearts at speed and scale. Okay. That's what we do. And I think it was by Viktor Frankl. Tell me if I'm right or wrong about this. And it was the moment of power is between the trigger and the reaction. It's that moment of choice. Do you remember yeah. that? I that do. Anymore? I can't remember who said it, but yeah, I, th yeah, I, I think I it's Viktor remember. Frankl. Yes. And what I'm, what, what I'm hearing, and even in my questions about, you know, before you ask for something from your boss, before you make a new proposal to the board, whatever, that moment right there, that can help you get right back into the present and be more intentional, whether it's eat another cake, whether it's ask for the budget, whether it's say, I'm going to take it, I'm going to be offline for an hour, whatever, anywhere in between Absolutely. 60, we all have 60 seconds. Yes. Yeah. As I tell people, you, you're going to the bathroom, do it in the bathroom. If can you, you do that when you're walking? Room. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Cause I was absolutely. thinking like back in the day when I was walking to meetings back to back, I could have been intentionally breathing the whole time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's Got almost it. like giving yourself 60 seconds and you're not going to look at your email on the way to that meeting. You're not going to, it's just like breathe. That's yeah. all I got to do is breathe. It's free. It's, it's, you can do it anywhere. You <laughs> yeah. can carry it in your back pocket is just yeah. breathe. If there's anything that you can remember is breathing and the counting helps because it actually helps you focus and just be present yeah. on the breathing instead of the 8 million other things that are on your to-do list. Yeah. Yeah. So if you find yourself regretting your actions lately, because one of the studies I read is, you know, anger is up and reaction is up, right? I mean, yes. exponentially up. What a gift to everybody. If you find yourself at the end of the day, you know, reflecting on the day and you feel like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Or, oh, I could have said that better. Or, oh, perhaps you're not breathing enough. I, yes. I'm, I'll just leave that. Right. And I think it's true for all of us. Um, let me ask you this. So when we think about burnout and what it looks like and how it feels. And we think about like the four healthy habits that you talk about. I think I heard you say that the mindset is the hardest and the most important. Did I hear that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So is there it any is. nugget or um, tip you can give us on that too? I just want to like pull, extract it all from you. So if we're breathing, absolutely, that's great. And then what can we do for mindset? So mindset, and you kind of tapped on this earlier, the things you started doing is reframing how we're looking at things, becoming mm. more aware. So it's again, how do we talk to ourselves? And sometimes we don't talk to ourselves very nicely. We really don't. We talk to, I tell, I tell this, and I, I say this is if you were talking to yourself, talk to yourself like you do your friends. A yeah. lot of times we don't do that. But if you did, you're not going to tell your friends that they're ugly, that you don't like the way their thighs look, that they are lazy, that they can't do anything right. You're not going to say that to your friends. So why are we saying that to ourselves? So starting there is mm. I am beautiful. I have a lot of energy. I am successful. I am doing things because it matters to me. Now, how can I take that and say, instead of, well, this is just what I do. And this is who I am. I'm the type of person that does this is, am I, that's our story that we tell ourselves, right? So we can always change our story, but it's all in our mindset. So like a couple of examples would be, okay, I'm not a morning person. And if somebody always tells themselves, I'm not a morning person, they are not going to be a morning person. Mm -hmm. However, how can I, is that the only time I have during the day to take time for myself before anybody bothers me to exercise, to just, you know, journal, whatever it may be. 
okay, how can I become a morning person instead of I'm not a part? How can I? I love okay, it. now we start there. And then it's not as simple as that, right? Now we take that and we say, well, it can start with that. How can I? Oh, how do I? Oh, okay. I do need to go to bed a little earlier. Okay. If I'm not a night owl and now I'm a morning person, now what do I do? So it's really like, okay, now I go to bed a little bit earlier. Now I set myself up in the morning. So I have this time or is it, I'm always, I, I can't help myself. I always eat sugar. I just eat sugar. Am I the type of person that eats sugar or is how can I, how do I look at this? Do I want this? Am I the person that always eats this? Or am I the person that again, changing our story? So mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that loves vegetables and I do enjoy some sugar, but I want to savor it. So it's really taking these little tips and saying, how can I, what do I need to do? How does this work? And it's changing our story and our minds. We don't always think that we're always have to be one certain way, but it's how do I change it to say, mm -hmm. how can I, how can I find a walk? How can I find a way to talk to my friends that I've been meaning to talk to? How mm -hmm. can I find a way to, you know, speak with my employees over this very important thing in a way that matters to me. It's, it goes with anything in our, in our yeah. lifestyle and anything is how can I flipping the way that we do? And I must, there's the, I shoulds. I know I should, I know I need to, but if we change it to, I must, I must becomes now that massive action taking response. I should get, I should go do this. I should walk more. I should eat better. Instead, I must, I must start moving more. I must eat, you know, four vegetables a day. I must sleep seven hours. A what are those musts mm -hmm. for you? So it's really just so much yeah. that goes in our mind. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes just ask, like, can I just get a meal plan or can I just follow this? And it's, it, but it, somebody can give anybody anything to look at. But as soon as you, is your mind's not there, you'll mm -hmm. never follow anything. Yeah. So it's how do you change that first to really find what works for you? This is so cool. So I wrote down two questions or I wrote down, how can I? And then I wrote uh -huh. the statement, I must insert. Blank. Yes. Um, yes. I'm going to give you the one I hear every day with every coaching client, every program I ever, I hear all the time. I have my own opinion, but I'm not yes. going to share that because I want to leverage you and I'll, I'll add mine at the end. There's not enough time. Yes. So give me some, drop the mic on that one, my friend. Yes. So there's not enough time is doubling down. So I call it the double down. So I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, so you're, you don't have enough time. Okay. But do you like to watch Netflix? Do you like to scroll Facebook? Do you, so it's really looking at where is our time going first mm -hmm. of all. So like where am I spending inventory? my time? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Where am I spending my time? But then at the same time, I don't say, okay, just stop watching Netflix. I'm like, do you have a treadmill? Do you have somewhere you can go walk, watch that? You can binge it, so binge flick, binge watch Netflix while you're on the treadmill. <laughs> yeah. And I used to do this with Us Weeklies. I used to be a fan of Us Weeklies. Reading those, you know, that's the only junk magazine. But I would never read it unless I was on the treadmill or working out. So I would oh, never start like piling up. Yeah. Yes. It was like yeah. I could double down and do that at the same time. So it's how do you number one instead if you don't if you truly don't have the time, how do you double down and do things at the same time? The walks and the conference calls the, you know, watching something while you're moving or, or if you want to listen to a book, do that while you're walking or, or doing the dishes. Um, and something, something else is like, all right, well, what does it look like? And what are, where is that time going? And do I find myself, am I, am I not getting sleep because I am late up at night doing this? How do I, and those are habits again, that we've established. I have yeah. to watch the show at night. I have to do this. Okay. What do I really need to do to be able to get the sleep that I want? Do I need to back up? Do I stop my TV at this time? Okay. Now I have my sleep. Okay. What's the next thing is where's is that time going? Do I just get up 30 minutes earlier? Do it. Where is that? Do I have five minutes here? It doesn't have to be a ton of time. You can do things in blocks. People always think we have to have an hour here, an hour there. If you have mm -hmm. five minutes, you can get a movement in five minutes. If you have five minutes here, you could usually I'll just watch a lifetime, you know, one of those lifetime movies at Christmas and I'm doing that when I'm cooking dinner. So it's, how do you still enjoy those things and do those things at the same time? And getting out of the, I just don't have time. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. I wrote down time inventory. And I, if you're okay, yes. I'm going to borrow that. Like I'm going to borrow yes. that with my clients. Absolutely. I, one of the things I know for sure is we all have the same amount of time in a day. Yes. And this concept of that, we don't have any time. Everything you're saying makes sense to me. I love this double down concept too, or, you know, um, walking and something and like, yes. where are the ands yes. that you can incorporate? Yes. And, and the thing that's either or. Exactly. You can live in an yep. and world. You can, you, you know, and is possible. And yes. I really believe we can bend time if we're intentional. 
and we're rested because you can actually be more productive. So every time I go back to the science, when I'm working with my clients, you know, I'll pull up whatever article I can find that's going to resonate with them. But the pull through is always the same. We are not in the industrial age anymore. We are not going to school and then growing up and building parts or widgets. We are yes. in a thinking economy and the brain cannot function at its best when it's depleted. Exactly. It just can't. So if you don't have enough time, my first thing, I guess we all go back. I say, what, well, how's your sleep? right? Yeah. Because that's restorative. That's when all the synapses come back together and you file things away. Um, the other thing for me, because I've, I've been guilty of there's no time. I change right. it to there is enough time. And I go, and then I go even further. What, what do I want to start saying no to, to make way for yes. Yeah. And I, I, I leave people with no makes way for yes. And if you're going to a meeting without an agenda, if you are leading meetings without an agenda, you are wasting people's time. You don't have the budget yeah. of their time and you have a moral ethical and fiduciary responsibility to make those meetings matter, right? Mm -hmm. So think about even the, 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 can they be walking meetings? Is there an agenda? Are you closing the loop? Is this just because you feel like pulling everybody together so they can hear you talk? Shame on you. No, you know? So I, could, I get really like passionate about this with the time thing. And I love the time inventory and I love the end. Like I'm going to just yeah. really highlight this because it, it's about mindset and habit. And this is what you're talking about. It is yeah. absolutely. It's mm -hmm. just taking what you've already, you're, what you're already doing and how do you add on, yep. right? Yep. So it's like, it, it's, it's easier to add in habit than it is to start a habit. So if you're already doing something, you, mm -hmm. if that new thing you want to try or do add it on to something you're already doing, mm -hmm. right? So if it's, you want to start, oh, I want to start reflecting in the morning or journaling, add that on to add right after you make your coffee. This is what I do at this time. Mm -hmm. If you want, you know, just the add on is so much easier than saying, I'm going to start this brand new thing and this is how it's going to go. Yeah. Make one it more easy thing on ourselves. On shoulders, right? Yeah. yeah. Just make we it easy on yourself. One more thing. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll say this how many of us, raise your hand, I can't see you, but I know your hand's about to go up. Think really great in the shower. That is an amazing reflection time. You know why? It's yeah. quiet. You can't yeah. be doing everything else. And so I, I get the world and I understand Mother Earth, and I'm not saying go take an hour long shower but perhaps linger in the bathroom while you're drying off and keep thinking, you know, yeah. uh, that is magical time. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I, th I think between that and a walk, I, I think walks oh, are magical where you yes. just are uh, when you're out in nature and you're just, nothing else is around you. I'm like, give yourself that if that's your self care, right. Uh, yeah. Just moving and just thinking you're finally reflecting and nothing's else, nothing else around you. I get my best thinking sometimes super creative during those times because yeah. I don't have everything else clouding it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I think, um, maybe you have a question you ask yourself, but the question I ask myself is how can I make today great? And so that. like my reflection time is that. And then my other reflection question is always, how do I want to feel today? Because that yeah. becomes then the baseline for the, the decisions I make. Do you have a question when you're walking or in nature or reflecting that people may want to um, leverage? That's a great question. I don't actually ask myself questions like that, but I should. Um, but I think I just let it come to me. So I it think just, just allowing myself mm -hmm. this space to say, yeah. all right, what do I need right now? And it's this, I, the, yeah. what do I need right now is a very important thing. And I think yeah. I always ask myself that mm -hmm. um, it's, we think we need, or we have a certain way we do things, or we have a very strict routine, but is that what I need right now? Or do I need to change that? What works for me right now? Yeah. And that might just flip, right? Your normal routine could change that day. You might change anything. It's okay to make that. It's, it's what works for your lifestyle and take, care of what your needs are during that time, because each day is going to be completely different. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. I can't wait for people to get <laughs> to know you through this interview. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, one thing I do, I ask everybody, cause I'm building an awesome playlist to help people yeah. raise their energy, raise their vibes, because we all need, as we know, like when you're in that space, you're much more, um, uh, productive is the word I'm going to say, but it's not energized. You're, you can yes. enjoy, right? I believe music is a way to the soul. So I'm building a playlist what song or songs make you feel happy or joyful when you hear them? Like what's your go-to? Man, there's so many. Um, I love this. I love pop. I love hip hop. Anything by Beyonce, Rihanna mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. like always super exciting. Those yep. are, I love those. Um, yeah, I think any of those would always get me super excited. And I love any kind of like pop type, exciting, those good beats and, yep. and energizing. I love that. Yeah. This coming from the yoga teacher who's all about like getting quiet and centered, right? And then she's breaking up. Oh, Rihanna well, sometimes I do. Oh, yeah. I love doing, I'll do yoga classes with upbeat music sometimes Get too, out. depending on the flow. Oh yeah. I love oh. hip hop yoga. That's one of my favorites. Get out. I didn't even know there was a hip hop yoga. 
Oh yes. There oh, that's is. so you cool. Can do, there's so many things you can do. And again, it's all about how you feel. There doesn't, I don't like conforming and I don't think others do as well. And that's what people don't want to do a certain, you know, go a certain way or do a certain right. thing because they feel like that's the way it is. Yeah. No, we can have fun with things and have fun or else you're yeah. not going to want to do it anyway. Oh my God. Hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm checking that out. Okay. Where can people find you? How do people find okay. you? Yep. So um, megancorey.com slash call has a little bit about me, what I do. And you can also set up a time to talk with me. And then I'm at Megan Corey Health Coach on all um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Oh, that's so great. Well, you guys, yes. you want to go find Megan. I know you do. Like, look at all of this awesomeness, awesomeness. Um, I'm just so grateful for your time. I learned a lot. I feel like we are adding value to everybody who's listening in. It's oh, a joy to you. know you and, you know, share this journey of helping others and very grateful for your time. Oh, and I'm so grateful we connected and able to do this. Thank you so yeah. much for having me on. Yeah, you're so welcome. All right, everybody. Until next time, go take care of yourself. Do your breathing. Take inventory and make it an and world, right? And is where the magic is yes. at. All right. Thank you.